Hey everyone. So in this uh, tutorial video, we are going to go over the Qdrent cookbook that we've prepared. And in this cookbook, what we'll do is we will build a knowledge store using the Qdrent integration. Uh, and that comes in the form of the Qdrent knowledge store class. And what this class allows us to do is it allows us to connect to any Qdrent service that we've got uh, running and that could be you know running locally on your machine or in the cloud that you've uh, uh, are sub sub subscribed to uh, For this specific notebook, we will be launching a local Qdrent service and we'll do that using docker and we'll see that soon um, And that again will be our knowledge store for the rag system that we will build in this in this notebook Okay so first step, let's install our dependencies. And for this notebook, we need two extras to uh, come along our FedRag uh, installation, which are Hugging Face and Qdrent. Qdrent, again, will bring the Qdrent Knowledge Store. Uh, and Hugging Face, we need that because we want to make use of sentence transformers um, to act as our retriever for our RAG system. And the other uh, dependency that we will use here is Docker, uh, the Docker SDK. And what we will use that for is spinning up a local Qgent service. If you go to Qgent's documentation and you navigate to their quick start, they've got a one-liner, uh, which is a Docker run command that will get you up and running with a local Qgent service. And that one-liner is essentially what we're using here. Um, we're just um, deploying it using the Docker SDK. One important note to make is that uh, you can open this notebook in a Google Colab. And if you are using a Google Colab, then unfortunately you won't be able to use the Docker version of this because um, they don't allow us to spin up Docker images on Google Colab. And so what you're going to need to do is you're going to need, need to set this with Docker parameter to false. And if you were to set this to false, Eventually what will end up happening is your Qdrent service will be the in-memory option that Qdrent uh, offers. And they offer this for you know rapid experiments and, and prototyping. And that's essentially what will happen. So you'll just get an in-memory uh, instance for Qdrent. But since this is on my machine and I've got Docker installed, um, we're gonna go ahead with, with Docker equals true. And as I mentioned, this part here, what we're gonna do is use the Docker SDK to execute the Qgent image, uh, or sorry, execute the running of the Qgent Docker image. And in just like that, we've got a local Qgent um, vector store up and running. And now we can move on to the next part, which is setting up our retriever and our Qgent knowledge store. And to do that, we, you know, we just gotta obviously import our Qgent knowledge store and our uh, sentence transformer retriever. And we've got a couple uh, um, data structures that we'll need, which are the knowledge node and the node type. And, and so the process is essentially, we will have some text chunks, we'll need to convert them into knowledge nodes. Uh, and then we will, um, you know, in doing that actually involves using the retriever to embed the text chunks into embeddings. And then once we have the nodes uh, built, uh, then we can upsert them into our knowledge store. So let's go ahead and do that. And for this notebook, we're using Dragon Plus as a retriever, which is a dual retriever. We've got an encoder for the query as well as an encoder for the context. And you need to pass in both of those names to the sentence transformer retriever. And then let's instantiate our knowledge store. And again, since we are uh, using Docker in our case, then we will instantiate uh, the, the Qgent knowledge store as such. And just want to make mention if you know you weren't using Docker, the only difference here is that we are specifying that uh, to, to make use of the in-memory instance that's available. Okay, so let's run this command. Now we've got our retriever, we've got our Qgent knowledge store set up. Let's add some knowledge into it. So I just mentioned that we would be taking these text chunks and this is just a small sample from the December 2021 Wikipedia dump. But we'll take these text chunks and we will convert them into uh, so-called knowledge nodes. I don't need to import them again, so we can remove that. Um, and so this, this cell over here will convert the text chunks um, in the format that we described it. It will embed uh, the text and then we can create our nodes. 
Okay, now that we have our nodes, we can load them into our knowledge store. And there should only be three. Yes, they are. So there are three nodes, one for each of these text chunks, and we've just uploaded them into our local QGent vector store that's up and running. And now just to demonstrate a uh, retriever from the knowledge store, we can have a query who is James Cook. So it should, you know, should retrieve this one, right? And you know, we'll have to encode the query. So retriever.encode query to list will make it into a list of floats. And that's what we need to pass to the retrieve method of the knowledge store. So you pass in the query embedding. I'm going to specify top k is equal to one. And let's see which one we get. So it looks like we get a score of 0.499. Um, and the default here is uh, the cosine similarity. And we get the node that we were hoping for, which is this one. Okay, and that's it. Now uh, you've seen in this video how to use the QGent uh, integration by using Docker to spin up a local version. Uh, we can now clean this up by stopping the container and removing it uh, from our system. And just one final note on connecting to a managed QGent service. So when you do have a, a managed QGent service, then you know you would have your API key and you would have a host. Uh, so you would just pass in these, this information. And then, yes, you also need to pass in your collection name. Um, and by the way, if that collection doesn't exist, then our integration will create a new collection for, uh, for you. Uh, and you can add nodes to that new collection. And that gets handled under the hood. And the last thing that you need to do if you are using a managed uh, service is you need to set, a, set HTTPS equal to true. And that's it. Thanks for uh, following along.